Uh, now we are going to talk about mobility, eh? sustainable mobility. Uh, it's estimated that the city of Barcelona has a touristic demand of 17.4 million of tourists per year, staying overnight, and about 5.6 million day travelers who stay overnight in other places of Catalonia and visit the city of Barcelona while on cruise ships trips or layovers. If we count the total number of overnight stays of tourists, and one-day travelers, we have a total of 154,000 visitors per day, with peaks of about 220,000 visitors per day. Peaks that occur with the, in a high season with the massive arrival of cruise ships. Mm -hmm. uh, the model distribution, and that's a good news, the model distribution of tourists is more sustainable than the residents' one. Tourists prefer walking, uh, 45%, and using the metro, 33%, for their displacements. Being the taxis, regular buses, or the touristic booths, less than 15% of the preferred means of transport that are used for the tourists. Uh, one day's travelers evidence that the rodalias, that's the short and medium distance trains, and the intercity buses account for 54% of the displacements. So there are mm, sustainable means to move into the city, but there is a high amount of uh, visitors and, and mobility that increase our own mobility. So for that reason, the city of Barcelona and the Barcelona metropolitan area, we are working hard to integrate the demand on the system. And that's important, shifting from an exceptional to a structural perspective. The touristic mobility, due to its intensity, concentration, and exceptionality, poses new challenge regarding the management of the public transport network. But it also requires to regulate and organize situation of saturation and compatibility with other means of transport, and also in order to make compatible with the congestion of the public spaces. The objective of this round table is to share experiences and how to manage the needs of tourists, the workers of the hospitality sector and residents. And for that, we have the panelists. We have five panelists, and I have the name uh, here. Miss uh, Florentina Pauli. Project Assistant of Civitas Destination, Limassol Tourism Development and Promotion. Uh, Mr. Marian Dumanek, Senior Advisor, Rera East Point, D Point, sorry, yeah, but I don't know all the <laughs> Split Dalmatia Contro, Sirocco. Uh, Mrs. Montserrat Duran, responsible for territorial analysis and tourist product, government of Catalonia, and the project Met Cycle Tour. Slavo Mezek, Regional Development Center, Cooper, yeah? And Carolina Navarro, eh? Area Manager of Valencia Poor Foundation. So, we begin. Eh? Let's, uh, Fiorentina. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. I am representing LTC, that is the Limassol Tourist Company, that is an organization that promotes and supports tourism in the region of Limassol. 
Today, I'm going to share with you experiences of sustainable actions that are implementing with the Civitas Destination Project with the aim to make our lives more compatible. Civitas Destinations is a project, a Horizon 2020, basically, that started 2016 and will be finished by next year. In this project, six coastal cities, including Limassol, Las Palmas del Gran Canaria, Recimno, Elba, Funcha, and Valletta, we apply a set of methodologies in order to develop and implement sustainable mobility measure with a view to develop sustainable mobility modes for tourists and residents. Each uh, city is uh, completing its own measures, but today I'm going to focus in our city, Limassol. So just very shortly to introduce you Limassol case study. Limassol region is situated in the, on the southern coast of the island and is one of the most important coastal city of Cyprus. With a population of 240,000 and Tourist arrivals annually are approximately 400,000 in Limassol. Limassol is a seaside destination with a unique identity and culture that offers us several options for leisure trips. In this map, you can see uh, the island and the distances are very short. Traveling between cities can take us an hour or less than an hour. I'm mentioning this to explain that sustainable, there is a lot of space for sustainable mobility in our island. So, talking about the needs of uh, residents, travelers, and workers, in, in order to promote those needs, we have to provide them with flexible solutions in order to improve sustainability. In order to do so, we expand the bike sharing system in uh, Limassol, and we install five bike stations in the city in collaboration with the next bike, Cyprus. Furthermore, we create three short videos in order to promote cycling in Cyprus and also to create awareness about the new law of cycling that was launched last uh, year, October, uh, for the first time I have to mention. Finally, maps have been created and distributed, including information about walking, cycling options in Limassol City. Furthermore, more material was uh, upgraded cycling and walking routes and in an attempt to promote cycling and walking in special interest tourist activities. Also, sustainable mobility refers to the improvements of the use of parking places. That's an important aspect when we are talking about the needs and sustainable mobility. Therefore, displays and software were installed in several parking places demonstrating parking spaces availability. Also, an ecological route has been created that includes three municipal parkings with the e free parking for EV charging, uh, for electric car, sorry, EV charging stations for e-cars, bike sharing, and displays for parking availability. I'm mentioning these actions in order to explain that there is, the aim is uh, to combine all transport means with the city center using various integrated systems. To continue, regarding electromobility, there is a measure that is focusing on the creation of an electric car network to Limassol airports and ports. So together, in collaboration with the Cyprus Electricity Authority, EV charging stations with shelters have been installed in the two airports of Cyprus and also in other locations. Also, maps have been created that provide information about the location of EV charging stations. However, I have to mention that regarding electromobility, there are a lot to be done. We are behind uh, in, uh, in Cyprus overall, but this is again a challenge to improve. So, furthermore, in order to increase visitor awareness of sustainable mobility, we are organizing campaigns, cycling, hiking, walking campaigns, uh, social media announcements, newsletters, newspapers, distribution of promotional material to hotels in order to inform, pub, to create public awareness regarding options and uh, sustainable mobility uh, modes. 
to shift travel behavior, I have to mention, is important and hard to be achieved. Though, according to studies, show that people can convince to switch to less polluting modes for at least some of their trips. To continue, more installations took place under the Civitas destinations, such as bike racks, bike racks at buses, and uh, travelers can, uh, can, can carry their bike and visit uh, rural areas, as well as map panels that promote walking and cycling, and travelers can be aware about the distance uh, walking from A to B. Turning our attention to workers, I would like to share an interesting good practice that took place under the Civitas uh, destination. That was a campaign, Bicycle Challenge, that was a campaign to promote cycling from home to work and overall the daily use of bicycle. In this campaign, five companies participating, including a hotel and a restaurant, in a three-month bicycle challenge campaign. Therefore, employees were using their bicycle, recording the distance travel each day, and the cycling time and the route. All this information were sent by mail, and at the end of the campaign, uh, a ceremony took place. Also, in an attempt to combine tourists and mobility products in Limassol, 18 distribution points at hotels have been created for the newly introduced tourist mobility card. For the completion of this task, 18 hotels have been awarded the green label certification and committed to promote public transport to their customers. The users, by using this uh, tourist mobility card, I have to explain, will be benefited with discounts, offers that will upgrade their holiday experience. A part of the promotion of public transport, also hotels are committed to promote walking to the city center, bike rentals, and bike sharing. Additionally, regarding the public transport traveler system, this will be improved with the installation of 40 electronic displays on buses and at bus stops, providing real-time information uh, to passengers. Electronic uh, displays will make public transport more, uh, let's say, convenient and user-friendly. Furthermore, an application has been created. In the application, user can find locations according to his interest and organize the leisure trip regarding with specific sustainable modes for transport. This application gives the opportunity to the user to find information regarding specific places of interest, cycling options, walking options, etc. So, to conclude, we are focusing on innovative ways to promote the use of public transport through an accessible service that is fast and convenient for the user. To sum up, sustainable mobility in Limassol is considered as a need and a challenge as well. Thank you very much. A good experience, Fiorentina. Your turn, Maria. <coughs> Well, good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I would like to thank uh, for the organizer of this conference to invite, for inviting me on this uh, conference and uh, to give me opportunity to share uh, our experience uh, in uh, implementation of the project uh, Shiroko. Uh, I will tell you just a few words about the project uh, Shiroko. Uh, it's a single study model project from the Interreg uh, program. Uh, and it combines partners uh, from Spain, Italy, Croatia, Cyprus, and Greece. Uh, focus of the project uh, is uh, cruise tourism. Uh, as I read to the, a few days ago, the theme of our uh, uh, talk today will be how to manage the needs of tourists, the workers of the hospitality sector, and the residents. And, um, I think that within the project Chiroco, we were doing uh, just that. We were trying to find this equilibrium of uh, conflict of interest of uh, really, really many actors uh, in the cruise sectors in the five ports that I will mention uh, soon. Uh, 
Before I tell you more how uh, we try to find this equilibrium, um, uh, there, is, there are a few things that uh, I would like to point out about uh, cruise tourism uh, in general. Uh, as many of you know, Mediterranean is the second biggest region according to tourist visits, uh, right after the Caribbean uh, region uh, in the world. And not only that, this, uh, uh, that we are second today, but all forecasts suggest that uh, gro the steady growth of this sector will continue in the next 10 years. So the um, mass congestion uh, and uh, all implications about uh, this uh, sector uh, will be even harder in the next 10 years. So some kind of action is required for um, our side. Seasonal seasonality is uh, another uh, characteristic of the cruise uh, market, meaning that uh, major uh, tourist visits uh, Mediterranean in the interval between uh, uh, between May and October, and that's high season uh, in all Mediterranean countries. So we have a mass of all other type of tourists, and cruising is adding uh, additional value to this. Uh, not only seasonality, but uh, the Crews make a, a really big impact also in a few hours. Uh, we spoke to before about that in a big ports like Civita Vecchia, Barcelona. Maybe that impact is not so strong, but where we are talking about port of uh, Dubrovnik or port of Split where are coming, uh, this five or 6,000 persons in three or four or five hours make a really, really big uh, impact and, and, and craziness, let's say it in that way. Additional, uh, it is uh, good to say that the uh, public sector is very active in, uh, in the governance and an operation of cruise ports uh, in the Mediterranean. And uh, this is very really typical for Mediterranean. In Asia and in America, there is, uh, there is some private partnership. There is also here in Europe, but mainly, mainly it's uh, uh, public sector active. And uh, investments in infrastructure is also uh, mostly public, while benefits all is always divided between cruise companies and, let's say, uh, local operators. So how we did uh, within uh, this project, we made a cruise value chain uh, uh, operation analysis in five ports, port of Civita Vecchia, Valencia, Split, Rhodes and Limassol. Uh, we did a lot of talking, a lot of interviews, a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, with the relevant stakeholders, and ac according to the information received from them, uh, we prepared a draft action plan. After we prepared the draft action plan, we organized a um, stakeholders meeting in order to uh, put stakeholders uh, all together to give them opportunity uh, to uh, change, uh, to give them uh, opportunity, basically to give uh, some kind of uh, credibility of our action plan that we, uh, that we uh, prepared. Uh, why we did uh, these action plans? Uh, the reason is uh, to serve as a guidance for the Med Mediterranean ports and destinations that aim at more sustainable cruise tourism sector in economic, and environmental and social terms. Uh, because this type of tourism is happening to us. Uh, public sector is uh, making uh, really big investments in this sector and uh, there is no way to avoid it. Uh, we just need to adjust it in a terms that uh, is good for everyone, especially for the local uh, uh, residents people. Uh, to federate stakeholders in the med uh, area around a common set of high importance priorities, uh, to provide valid ideas for pilot project areas to be included in the future funding opportunities, and to promote transnational cooperation among private and public cruise tourism actors in the med area. As you know, cruise uh, business is a transnational business. Uh, a lot of itineraries are going from uh, Spain to Italy to Greece, and uh, we cannot pretend that we are here uh, alone and do it uh, solely on ourselves. Uh, results of the uh, joint action plans are basically our pilot scenarios. Uh, we use this uh, bottom-up approach, gathering information uh, uh, from, the local uh, from the local stakeholders in each destination, and uh, we identify the action that could benefit from the results of pilot testing before proceeding into the full implementation, the definition of the objectives of the pilot, definition of the pilot scenarios, and we identify the stakeholders required to be involved for more uh, successful implementation uh, of the project. Uh, as a final remarks, um, I will point out that uh, 
For example, in a port where I live, in the port of Split, uh, cruise activity is going uh, every year better and better. Every year we have more and more um, cruise calls, uh, but uh, stakeholders are doing it, uh, every, uh, everybody is doing it on their own. There is no uh, some kind of body, some kind of um, uh, cooperation and coordination among them. Uh, and that's why we are very proud to making, to to setting up these stakeholders together to put them on the same table and try to, uh, to try to prepare some strat future strategy future strategy um, unfortunately we didn't manage to find some permanent solution because uh, there was uh, that we didn't simplify the money for it because you cannot imply people to do something if they are uh, if they are taking their time uh, but we are finding future solutions to implement these uh, pilot activities. Uh, thank you once more. And thank you, Montserrat. Uh, hello, good afternoon to all. I just want to thank to the organization to let me to present the, the sustainable mobility in tourist destinations to give me this opportunity. Then, the current area of globalization has an impact on the environment due to the overexploitation of resources and the low contribution of citizens. Sustainable tourism plays an important role in protecting and promoting the use of ecosystems. As established in the strategic plan for tourism in Catalonia to be applied until 2022, the development of sustainable tourism products stimulates the growth of the, of the seasonalized, diversifies, the concentrates, and helps increase spending in saturated areas. To reduce the ecological footprint of the tourism industry, we must promote measures to inform and sensitize the industry, adopting international recognized standards for certification and involving the private sector in the preservation of the environment. As, as some colleagues show us this morning in the level and certifications to promote tourism, uh, and sustainability speech. Then, integrating local communities in tourism activities makes tourists enjoy an enriching experience and benefits the local economy. This, bene this benefit can be used for conservation or local development because a city that is not equipped for its citizens is not for tourists. The cycle tourism is one of the best sustainable tourism products because it reuses infrastructures and helps to promote and conserve the cultural and natural heritage of the region. According to United Nations World Tourism Organization, tourism is responsible for at least the 8% of global CO2 emissions. We have to adopt good practices to reduce those emissions. Cycle tourism is a perfect tool for developing, for developing sustainable tourism in the Met area by reducing CO2 emissions during holidays. The use of bicycle reduces the external cost of transportation, pollution, noise, climate change, congestion. This reduction could generate savings of between 430 and 1,700 million euros per year just in Catalonia. Tourism is one of the driving forces of the global economy. The cycle tourism can become an engine of growth of the local economy in the creation of jobs. For example, for each direct employment generated, there are three interests or develop new kind of businesses, or businesses related to this kind of tourism. According to studies about cycle tourism, the direct economic impact is 44,000 million per year. 
cruises tourism generates an impact of just 39,000 million per year. For example, the Danube route that belongs to the Eurovelo 6 is one of the most popular routes in cycle routes in Europe. In the section of Austria, which is about 460 kilometers, provides between the 60 and the 80 percent of overnight stays in the area. European studies reveal the growing importance of cycle tourism, which is estimated between 1 and 4 percent for annual increase. The Mess Cycle Tour project, which is the ones that I represent, is being developed through an interreg med program. This project develops the Euro Velo C8, a cycle route that connects the whole Mediterranean, 5,800 kilometers from Cadiz to Athens and Cyprus. This route passes through very popular tourist destinations and will help to de-seasonalize and distribute the tourist flow on these overcrowded areas, increasing the consumption of local produce and average spending with longer stays. We need a sustainable development of tourists, and for that, we require the informed, the informed participation of all agents involved in the tourist equation. The public authorities, with an adequate regulation and a firm political leadership, the enterprises attending the best practices, the local communities, and the tourists themselves. Destinations must adopt new ways of planning and managing tourist attractions. The development of a sectoral tourism plan will help to create more attractive, differentiated, and sustainable tourism products that will make the tourist experience different. Emphasize the tourist mobility and the sustainable use of natural and cultural resources. This will achieve more intelligent and green destinations that can benefit not only its inhabitants, but also tourists. Promoting kilometer zero products and local culture among the tourist industry generates richness and promotes sustainable tourism, not only in the local community, but also among the industry that offers a product differentiate from its standardized competence. Give a hand to nature is worth it and costs very little. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, Marbe Monse, uh, it's your turn, Slavo. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Also from my side, I would like to uh, thank the organizers to invite me here on this uh, convention. Uh, I will talk about the uh, experiences uh, that we have on the Slovenian coast uh, in, in relation with the sustainable mobility. In the, uh, the first part of the, uh, my presentation, uh, I will uh, introduce you in our region, and in the second part, I will uh, talk about the, uh, some examples uh, of the uh, solutions and also what we are doing and what we think that we is to be done uh, in the future. Uh, Slovenian coast uh, is uh, very short, it is only 46 kilometers. Um, the region is a coast, so called karst coast region. In fact, it is not a region, it is only a planning region. That means that there are eight municipalities that are working together in the preparation of uh, regional development programs, but there is no administrative structure in behind. The population is about 113,000, and in coastal towns, Copper, Isola, Piran, and Karan, uh, it is the majority, it is uh, about 88,000. As you see uh, from the photographs, the, the um, uh, towns, uh, the coastal towns are quite uh, attractive also, and this is the basis for the tourism development in the area. Uh, in terms of the economy, uh, it is, uh, the region is uh, one of the most de developed in Slovenia. Uh, it is based on services and tourism, uh, together with the transport, are the most important activities. 
The port of copper is a pillar of uh, transport, which uh, also um, uh, influences also on the overall mobility uh, situation because uh, it is uh, very demanding and the, 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 the traffic through the port of copper is very, very intense. Uh, from the point of view of tourism, the Coast Coast uh, region is uh, one of the most important in Slovenia. It realizes about 25% uh, of tourist uh, overnights, about uh, 2.6 million, and uh, it has about uh, 20.5 uh, tourist beds in, in Slovenia. Uh, all the destinations, Piran, Izolan, Keran and Koper are, uh, are uh, quite important from the point of view of tourism and the most important is of course uh, Piran, uh, which realizes about uh, 1.5 uh, million overnights uh, per year. Uh, Mobility characteristics, uh, the region, the mobility is defined by the use of the personal car. Eh? The majority of people use still the, for everyday trips the, the car. The model um, share, it is about 77%. Uh, walking, it is still relevant, about 17%. Uh, but other modes are practically negligible. For example, the bus users are only 2.4%, which is very, very, very low. And also the bicycles, the use of bicycles are only 2.5%, which is again very low. And uh, railway is practically irrelevant. Né? So uh, there is uh, a lot of room to be done in order to change this model split in favor uh, of uh, bus, uh, uses of buses, bicycles and also public transportation. Uh, the mobility characteristics related to tourism, uh, the uh, area is uh, very burr because of the Tourism, it is very uh, burdened, uh, additionally burdened, uh, particularly in summer. On the graph on the right side, we see that between the May and October, we, uh, we, we, we have a, um, a substantial increase uh, of the burden of roads in the area. Practically all roads are burdened, and on the uh, map on the Left side, you can see that uh, the increase, uh, the summer increase of uh, traffic is uh, uh, about 50% in the coastal area between coastal towns and uh, about 100% in the hinterland when there is a connection uh, towards Croatia. Uh, that means that the Cro uh, Croatian Istria, which is uh, touristically very well developed, uh, is accessed through the, uh, this. Uh, uh, road in the hinterland, uh, and uh, on the right side you can see also a uh, um, diagram in which 80% uh, of visitors uh, uses, use the uh, personal car to come into the area. Uh, then uh, other uh, modes are uh, for, uh, also mo mobile homes, and buses together, if I'm, I see correctly here, it is about uh, 6%, something like that. The visitors coming there uh, by plane, it is 10%, and other modes are practically, uh, again, irrelevant. That means that uh, also these touristical flows additionally burden the situation and somehow petrify the existing uh, um, uh, model share in the area. The, the, these are the results, né? the um, parkings, particularly in, this, in the summer, are full. Also, these historic uh, centers are burdened by cars. Uh, the, the, the tourist areas are all parked and so on. And uh, this influences a lot also on the quality of life and also on the attractiveness of the area. So uh, this is additional um, uh, effect, which is uh, very, very important also for from the point of view of tourism. Uh, in last year, the municipalities Copper, Isola and Piran have prepared the sustainable urban mobility plans, uh, which is a big step uh, forward, also in, with the ambition to change a little bit the existing model split. 
uh, and um, uh, but uh, the weakness of uh, this approach it was that uh, they were uh, prepared separately. That means uh, not uh, with a view of the whole, uh, let's say, conurbation area, but separately for copper, separately for piran, for separately for uh, isola. And that's, this is the reason that in the project Chestnut, uh, uh, financed uh, by the program for Danube, we prepared a sustainable urban mobility plan for the functional urban area, in which we integrated the municipal approaches from these three coastal cities, and we formulated, let's say, what it is common uh, in between, between all these cities. And uh, we formulated the overall goals of the sum on the four level as a um, that the region wants to become active, healthy region. Uh, in for for um, reaching this goal, uh, there will be uh, measures for encouraging walking, uh, biking, and more popular uh, public transport. Then, uh, environmentally sane and specially attractive region. As I already said, uh, the uh, present traffic situation is burned and is uh, degrading also the the quality of the environment and the quality of landscape. And uh, we would like uh, also to contribute um, um, to the, these qualities uh, with the reorganization of the uh, uh, mobility scheme. And uh, the third point, it is cooperative region. We would like to establish uh, more close cooperation between all the municipal administrations in order to to uh, manage uh, better um, the uh, mobility towards uh, sustainable mobility. Uh, I go back. So uh, we, uh, in these efforts, we prepared an uh, intermodal passenger transport scheme, uh, spatial concepts, in which for the whole region, for the whole coastal region, we integrated different uh, uh, modes of transport. Uh, the um, pillar is uh, the public transport. Uh, then we combine the public transport also with the uh, maritime uh, passenger transport, with the bicycle lanes, with the park and ride systems, and uh, with the, uh, with the uh, areas uh, particularly important for walking. Uh, in this, we define the areas where we would establish the so-called shared uh, spaces, uh, particularly in uh, close to the uh, coast and in historic towns. Uh, we defined also the park and ride systems um, uh, so that uh, the visitors, particularly the visitors, would uh, leave the, uh, their uh, vehicles, their cars, uh, let's say, outside the most valuable uh, areas. And uh, on these uh, points, they will uh, use uh, uh, to circle in the area uh, more sustainable modes as uh, public transport, bicycles, and, and uh, uh, walking. So this is, uh, I think, a very important contribution, particularly because the municipalities are beginning, beginning to prepare their spatial plans. And we, in this way, we uh, tried to integrate spatial planning with the transport planning, which is, I think, a very, very important issue. And so uh, um, um, with this, uh, we will achieve that the uh, more sustainable solutions will be also incorporated uh, into the uh, new generation of uh, spatial plans, and in this, uh, the, the chances to be uh, um, to, to uh, contribute efficiently to the sustainable mobility are bigger. So uh, this uh, scheme uh, elaborated for the whole uh, area was also detailed uh, on the level of each municipality. For example, here we have uh, the the situation is the, in the Porto Roche, which is uh, one of the, uh, which is the most important uh, tourist area. Uh, on the coast, and uh, as you see, we, we uh, proposed and elaborated a system on which uh, the existing roads that are now uh, going on the coast will be transformed, uh, let's say, in shared spaces, and the, the car traffic will be removed, uh, removed uh, in a, uh, more in hinterland. So in this way, we will contribute also 
to the attractiveness of the uh, area for tourists, but also to enhance the quality of life uh, also for the um, inhabitants. Uh, here are some uh, examples what are we doing. Um, for example, the uh, public transport uh, um, is improving from year to year. Here we have a public transport scheme for the copper, uh, which is uh, very well covered with the uh, lines with the, for uh, urban pub public transport and uh, they are also um, um, making um, different efforts on how to make this public transport uh, more attractive. That means that the frequency of the buses are uh, higher and higher from year to year. They really want in this way to, to be closer with, uh, with, uh, to the needs of the people. Then we have uh, initiatives such as uh, Copper uh, Card, for example, in which uh, for the uh, people buying uh, these um, um, bus tickets or bus cards also can can benefit some some benefits from our uh, of um, tourist offers and so on they are improving also the quality the from the ecological point of view also of the vehicles for example here is the uh, you can see the the new uh, buses and so on uh, the other initiatives is the establishment of Traffic Information Center COPPER. Uh, the idea it is to, uh, to establish a professional group which will uh, uh, deal with the uh, transport issues on long term. They began to work in 2010 and they already um, uh, established a system for tracking uh, public uh, um, passenger transport vehicles so that in this uh, way it is uh, possible to get the uh, very relevant information on how the next bus will come and so on. And this uh, information is uh, reachable also with the applications, mobile finance and so on, which is uh, quite uh, uh, useful for, for the users of the public transport. Uh, they uh, in they uh, upgraded this uh, system now also with the counters uh, the counters of uh, vehicles or cars and the counters of uh, bicycles also in this way they will get the relevant information which will help also to uh, make the uh, management of the transport flows more uh, more professional and also they they established uh, information system on the parkings that means uh, the, with the information uh, uh, how, how it is the situation in parkings how much there is uh, there are free, uh, free spaces and uh, in this way uh, the the, the uh, users will have uh, this information and uh, this is much more comfortable uh, here are some uh, uh, solutions uh, from the municipality of Piran. Uh, you see, the Piran has a very, very tricky uh, geographical position. It is practically the uh, historic old town uh, on the peninsula, and it is practically impossible to uh, to to use the car there. So they establish a system with a very limited access uh, with the car. They built a big uh, car park outside the historic city, and they provide also the uh, the um, connection with the bus uh, free of charge from the uh, garage, from the park car to the, to the uh, uh, center of Piran. Uh, they established also the rent-a-bike system, uh, which is uh, very popular, not only with tourists, but also with the local population. Uh, what it is a problem, it is uh, the compatibility uh, with the future um, rent-a-bike system, which will be established for the uh, whole, um, let's say, coastal area and integrating uh, Copper Isola and Pirane. And they, they, they have also uh, services like um, um, Piranco, for example, uh, that, that this is uh, related to the city lo lo logistics. If you, if you have to bring some bigger uh, stuff into hotel or, for example, where you live, then you can use this uh, service. Uh, some examples from Copper and Isola. Um, the, uh, in Copper, the roads are uh, uh, along the coast uh, are have been transformed into the shared space so that it is uh, now uh, a use for cars, for pedestrians, bicycles, and so on. 
uh, under very, very restricted uh, conditions. Then uh, on the right side, we see the, um, the, the coast between the Copper and Isola. Uh, here it was 10 years ago, a very busy road with uh, 30,000 uh, 30, vehicles per day. And uh, they uh, built a tunnel and uh, redirected the, this uh, traffic from the coast into hinterland. And now the coast it is uh, free for pedestrians and for, for the bicycle lanes. Here it is also, here goes the a part of uh, Eurovelo 8. Né? And it is uh, on the, um, once it was 100 years ago, it was a, a railway connection between the Trieste and the Porridge in Croatia. And now this lane, it is transformed into the bicycle lane. Very, very popular with tourists and very important from the point of view of promotion of uh, cycling also uh, among the population. Uh, for example, here it is also, uh, this, this is very important also for commuters, né, between Isola and uh, Copper, it is very popular with uh, computers uh, too. So. And uh, I will finish with the uh, action that we recently established in the framework of the MedCycle Tour uh, project. Uh, we provided uh, trans the opportunity to transport bicycles by bus from the coastal area to the Karst Plateau, which is about uh, 300, 400 uh, uh, meters above, above the, the sea. And uh, this bus goes uh, every uh, weekend on Saturdays and uh, on Sundays, three times per day in all these directions. And so uh, we hope that this will be, again, a success story and a big contribution to make the uh, bicycling more popular among the, not only tourists, but also local population. Uh, with this, I'm finished. Uh, conclusions. Uh, conclusions, what we think that it is uh, very important uh, to do, uh, it is, uh, the first of all, uh, we have, in order to uh, shift mobility uh, towards more sustainable solutions, we have to integrate uh, the policies on the land use, environmental and transportation mobility and planning. Then we have also to enhance the cooperation between different stakeholders, uh, which uh, the stakeholders from tourism are, uh, uh, without any doubt, very, very important in our area. And we have also to enhance the cooperation intermunicipalities. That means uh, that they will have to um, uh, make a common vision and to plan together and to implement uh, measures together. And the other point it is to strengthen professional capacity in public administration for mobility. Uh, so we proposed uh, to, to, uh, to uh, establish an intermunicipal uh, office dealing with uh, this, uh, uh, with the mobility issues, uh, and in this way to to uh, assure the minimal standards uh, regarding the, the, the personnel and regarding the, the, the also the funds. And the last one, it is provide awareness and raising. Uh, awareness raising and public pr uh, promotion. With this, I am concluding. Uh, thank you for your attention. <coughs> Bravo. Carolina, it's your turn. Ooh. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank the Deputación of Barcelona to invite me to this event, to nice event, and to visit, to give me the opportunity to visit again Barcelona. That's always nice. Uh, I have been hearing a lot about over tourism, tourist phobia, and cruise uh, ships passengers doing crazy things in, in cities. And today, I think I'm the, the, the only one that is going to talk from other perspective, that is from the perspective of the Port Valencia, uh, because we are doing things uh, in order to improve not only sustainability in mobility, but also in other areas. But today, I'm going to talk about uh, the sustainable mobility in port cities and our experience in this topic. Uh, 
I'm going to put the, the attention in one project that we are working on that is support. Uh, support uh, has the, uh, the, the, the main objective is to improve the sustainability on mobility in med cities. Uh, it's a, also is an interreg med project, but is in other specific uh, objective is 2.3 uh, to increase the capacity uh, to use existing low carbon transport system and in the multimodal connection among them. Uh, we are working um, with uh, several MET uh, cities, as you can see, uh, Copper is also involved, Kotor, Durres, Iguminitsa and Limassol. All of them are testing uh, some mobility uh, uh, actions um, dealing with uh, the implementation of bike lanes or uh, updating uh, its mobility uh, sustainable plan and is led by Central Europe Initiative. Uh, I'm going to talk about our experience in Somport. Uh, it's the experience of the Port of Valencia. Uh, I don't know if you some know something about the Port of Valencia, but the Port of Valencia is the uh, main container uh, port in the Mediterranean area, but also in Spain. We are the first, when we talk about container, uh, con uh, containers, we move more than five uh, million of containers uh, last year. That is quite a lot. Uh, in Europe, we are the fourth, uh, competing with the north uh, ports that are very, very big compared uh, compare with us, but we are in a very good position. But also we have passengers. Uh, we, we have grew a lot in terms of cruise passengers. Nowadays, uh, we have one million of passengers uh, divided into ferry passengers that are who the, pas the, the passengers that are connected mainly with the island, Balearic Island from Valencia, but also with Al uh, Algeria. But we have also cruise passengers. Last week, well, last year, we have around 600,000 passengers coming to the Port of Valencia. In terms of, soup and of uh, cruise ship calls, uh, it was around 200 uh, cruise, uh, cruise ship arriving to the Port of Valencia. Uh, we have grew a lot, of, as, as mentioned. We have uh, grew more than 100% uh, during the last ten, 10 years. And then we have to try to manage all these things. But also we have workers. We have more than six thousand workers in the area of the port. Then there are a lot of people moving around the port. Passengers, but also workers. That's the reason why the Port Authority of Valencia in, in 2012 developed the mobility plan of the Port of Valencia, not the city, the Port of Valencia. This is not, is something that is specifically for the Port of Valencia. It's not, uh, not all the ports has this, this mobility plan. And what, what we do in, in Zoomport, we put the focus on three actions. We, we thought that it was time to update our mobility plan, and we are working on the, in this direction. We, but we are also making some initiative uh, to improve the mobility, but for workers and for cruise passengers. Uh, we have uh, developed, an, uh, uh, we, have, we are testing an app uh, in order to make carpooling for car work for poor workers, and also we tested a uh, e-bike sharing system for cruise passengers. Uh, regarding the mobility plan, uh, we started making a uh, wide funding diagnosis. Uh, with this wide funding diagnosis, we found some problems in in the port. Uh, you can see some small pictures. Uh, but I, I, I'm going to summarize a little bit. We find uh, problems with the access. Uh, it's difficult to know. If you see some several signals, you don't know because you are not from Valencia, you are not working with the port. If you have to go to the Marina Juan Carlos, or you have to go to, Balearia, to Baleares, or to Malvarrosa, or to Muelle Poniente, or Muelle Levante, because you are not expert in ports, and you are not working in the port of Valencia, maybe you arrive to take your ferry, and you don't know in which direction you have to, to go, and this is something, it's a problem. Uh, also, when you arrive to the port, you don't know where you are you arriving. When you arrive to an airport, you see the big name airport of Valencia, for instance. But when you arrive to the port, you don't know 
uh, if it's the main entrance or what it is, because also in Valencia we have a, pro a problem with some infrastructures because we still have the Formula One infrastructures close to the port. Then it's a little bit a mess to work around the port. But also we have problems of accessibility uh, for these uh, disabled people. And this is a real picture. It's not something that I found in internet. It's real. But also you, we have some uh, strange information because sometimes you have the, a, a signal to go to the bus, but it ends. It's the last one. Then you, you cannot take the bus because you don't know where is the bus. And also, the, as I mentioned, we are managing uh, goods. The Port of Valencia is not, it hasn't been designed for people. It has been designed for transportation, for transportation of goods. Then sometimes the safety conditions are not the best to walk or to drive inside the port if you're not an, or an expert. And also we have some problems with the coordination with the public company of transport. And after this, uh, this diagnosis that all of these things will be fit into the sustainable mobility plan of the Port of Valencia, uh, we found a very big problem that was one that is the when cruise passengers arrive to the Port of Valencia, they can decide go with an organized excursion, an organized trip offered by the shipping cruise line, or go by, f by their own and take their on decisions and to visit Valencia by bus, by taxi or walking. The Port of Valencia is six kilometers far away from the city center. Therefore, we can find people work, walking and they have only four hours to visit Valencia and this is something that is not very convenient. Therefore, we decided to put, to tell them that it's better to take the public bus. And how we tell them this? We put this uh, map totem, and this, this big one uh, signal, in order to allocate the port in the city. To show them that is, and we put how many times you have to walk to arrive to the city center. In order to say them, if you want to walk one hour, but you have another possibility. And we saw also the, 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 the closest uh, uh, bus stop. But also we make these directional markers in order to put on the way and to guide them uh, to, the, to the bus stop because they sometimes get lost inside the port. This is was, was one of the, of the uh, actions that we, well, we did it in order to improve pedestrian way for, uh, and the communication between pedestrian and public bus. Uh, we are also now uh, still working on the update of the, of the mobility plan of the Port of Valencia. Uh, we have some figures from, from the cruise passenger sector because we are also working in other uh, interregnet projects dealing with uh, sustainable uh, with tourism. But we also collect information about uh, how, how the port workers move to go and to go home uh, to the port. Uh, we launched a uh, questionnaire for our workers and w we were a little bit concerned about how many people will dedicate some time to answer, but finally uh, we are very happy because we have more than 600 of, of replies and it's 10% of the work that is more or less something significant. And now we are, I, I don't have so many figures because we are still uh, analyzing the information, but comparing with the, the data that we have uh, from six years ago, the, the mobility of our workers is improving and now they uh, are using less the car and using more uh, uh, by foot or by, by bike, for instance. But some, we are going to identify actions in order to improve this, these figures. Uh, this is the, the, the other action that we, we uh, test in Sumport project. We offer an uh, e-bike sharing system for cruise passengers. Uh, our idea was to, 
to put this is on a small scale in order to test if cruise passengers uh, wanted to use these electric bicycles. It was very easy because we have an autonomous uh, park. It was also a sustainable park because it was uh, uh, we installed solar panels for recharging the, the bikes. And we offered them bikes. And we expect it to be very, very successful having a big lane of crews is waiting to take uh, the, the, the bikes, but finally only eight cruise passengers tested the, the, the bikes. Uh, as we don't have so many time, I'm not going to enter in details because I have my own analysis about what, why it, it wasn't not very successful, but at least we tested. Well, and now uh, we are working on this. Uh, we are uh, we, we, the, the Port of Valencia, the Authority Port of Valencia, designed ten years ago a web, uh, a web page in order to uh, foster the, the uh, sharing uh, your own car uh, to go to the port. But it was old-fashioned, and we um, we select some test users, some colleagues, in order to test this old web page. And after this, we designed uh, all the specifications that we wanted to, to have in our new uh, carpooling uh, app. And now we, uh, we are in the process of, uh, of testing a new one. I don't have numbers for the moment, but I hope it was uh, more successful than the bikes. Uh, there are a lot of work still to do because, uh, of course, ports are, all, uh, are also responsible for, for their workers and their passengers. But I think the Port of Valencia is working on this direction and, uh, I, and with the collaboration of the City Hall of Valencia and the other stakeholders involved in this, I think we will reach good results. Thank you. Thank you, Carolina. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of questions from the audience. But in order to begin, uh, let me uh, ask you one question. Uh, and you have uh, shown that to have a mobility plan is a good solution eh, to, to arrange mobility. But in a more general terms, uh, can you tell us the experience of the way to to make lives of locals and visitors more compatible. You have talked a little bit about that, and you are an expert about that, but can you all, in your experiences, how to, how to make the needs of visitors and locals more compatible, not uh, to fight against? Well, I think that you, you have to start knowing the needs of both of them. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we are talking about the needs, the local needs, the citizens, but we have to, 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 to start a participatory process, I think, mm -hmm. in order to know uh, what are the specific complaints that the citizen has regarding tourism, and also uh, to try to offer tourism more alternative in order mm -hmm. to, to, to be more balanced, to keep the balance between citizens and tourist people in the cities. But it's, it's quite difficult, but I think you have to involve all the, to identify which actors are involved in this topic and to, and to, to create uh, a debate okay. and to build things between all of them to make them that they, have, they are participating and they took place, they, they took part of the decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Another opinion? Yeah? Uh, well, I agree that um, it is uh, important to know uh, what local uh, or local people uh, is uh, what they have on their mind. For example, in cruise business, especially specifically in uh, Croatia, there is a lot of media campaign against it. Uh, there is a lot of newspaper uh, writing about uh, that we don't want that type of tourism, that we don't uh, need it, that a lot of local people are against it. Uh, that uh, environmental impact is uh, very, very uh, negative and that we should uh, avoid it. 
on the other hand, uh, public sector is making new infrastructure projects, uh, investing a lot of uh, money into the uh, new ports, new uh, infrastructure. And uh, the problem is that we are missing uh, real information. I'm talking about specifically in Croatia. Uh, we don't know exactly, or we have old numbers, how much uh, cruise passengers are spending, uh, what uh, attractions are they visiting, in what numbers. We have some estimations, but uh, uh, the answer should be uh, real-time data collected uh, based on uh, how much they spend, what are uh, um, and environmental negative impacts to collect real data so we can uh, make a real conversation with them when we know data. So information is the, Crucial. the best solution. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Sorry, there is not the screen. Uh, no, but it's a good, it's a good, there is a question, what solutions could you share regarding the massive Greece tourist arrivals? I think more or less, yes. you have answered it. Yes, yes, but um, today I think that uh, Deputy Mayor of uh, Dubrovnik was participating here on the uh, debate on some other panel, and uh, she said that uh, because Dubrovnik is a very, very small city, and uh, two or three ships when they uh, came when they come in same day they make a really big mess. So they just make a simple decree that maximum two cruise ships. Uh, per day, or 12,000 people per day, yeah. divided into the 6,000 per, mo 6, per morning and 6,000 per night. Okay. And that simple solution can make uh, impact. Same thing that that, uh, that did Venezia, I think, two years ago. They simply reduced the numbers of uh, cruise ships. Okay. Uh, thank you. And there is a question that mm, I am very interested in, eh? because the question is what do you think about exclusive tourist mobility, such as tourist bus versus public transport, when used by tourists and visitors? At uh, what extent are them compatible? It's very interesting for me because my organization, Barcelona Metropolitan Area, we are, the, we are in charge of the tourist bus and airport uh, bus, and there are the two services that are not with a huge deficit as all the rest of the public transport. So I, I, I want to hear your opinion about that. Well, I consider a very good question, uh, the comparison between the tourist bus and the public transport. But thinking about providing options of sustainable mobility, I do not see it from a negative perspective. To give the option to a tourist to travel and, uh, by, by private bus, it's one sustainable option still, even though it can be a bit more expensive. But I consider it from a positive uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another opinion? No, so another question. Do you have carrying capacity indica indicators based on different type typologies of mobility in tourist destinations? I, I can say that we are working on heritage data that is also uh, under this uh, priority. And one of the topics that we are we're dealing with is uh, regarding uh, capacity, uh, current capacity indicators, and we are working on the definition of, of them for our for for our city. But also we need data. Yeah, data is crucial for all. <laughs> and we are searching for the way to have the proper data in real uh, in real life uh, um, in order to be able to to manage these this current capacity indicators. Okay. There is a, a question for you eh? and the other. <laughs> <laughs> I will share all other question. Carolina, why do you think the e-bike test was not as successful as expected? <laughs> for how long was the test conducted? Was, uh, the period was uh, all the season of cruises, the last uh, season that we started in July last year and, and uh, January this year, then we have enough time because we receive uh, enough calls. Um, my personal uh, opinion is because we put this service like a service of the, of the port, 
uh, without coordination or with the shipping company because they offer their own excursions, their own trips and, and their, their own bikes. There are several uh, cruise passengers that uh, choose bikes to make their tour, but the, uh, it's always higher before arriving to Valencia on the cruise ship because usually as you have only a few hours in the destination, most cruise passengers uh, prefer to hide e e all the services on the cruise. Uh, therefore, we, we offer like a, an alternative for these uh, free, um, uh, free cruise passengers that they decided uh, going by their own. Uh, therefore, when they arrive to the, to the station and they have to pay for these services, I think they were thinking about uh, taking the bus that is only one euro, and comparing with the bus is quite expensive. Uh, this is one of the, 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 the reasons that I, I think, and the second is due to the profile of the cruise passengers. 70% okay. of the cruise passengers are over 40. Okay, that's true, Thank that's you. a solution. And in Limassol? How does it run your uh, bike sharing? Okay, the bike sharing system has been more than eight years, if I'm not mistaken, in Limassol. And uh, not only tourists, but also locals are using. It's a very good networking by the seaside, but also is connecting the center of the city. So you can use it for daily use, but also for, uh, for us uh, to visit the attractions of the city. Yeah, as far as I know, it's going to expand also in uh, the capital city, Nicosia. And uh, it's very, overall, is uh, is used and and uh, by adding uh, five, uh, the new bike stations in the city center, we are promoting and supporting people to use it. Okay, 